Okay, so now the header panel is set out back out of the way and safe. We're going to come up here and we're going to take off the uh, upper radiator support. There's a 10 millimeter here, 10 millimeter here. The, uh, the washer fluid cap is stuck around it, so you'll just need to pull this off as it comes up around the reservoir. Over on the driver's side, we have another 10 millimeter, another 10 millimeter. And then down in front of the cooling fan, we have two more down here. So with that, it'll come off, and then we're going to pull it and set it over to the side. It'll still be connected via the cable, so I find it's just easiest just to kind of set this out of the way. So as you'll see, I've got the uh, upper radiator support sitting down there. It's still uh, just kind of hanging off of the, the hood release cable. Uh, you can pull off the, uh, the hood latch and get that a little bit more out of the way um, and kind of set the, uh, the hood latch somewhere out of the way. But uh, it's adjusted from the factory for the right height, so I tend to just leave it exactly where it is right now and kind of work around it. It's not too much in the way. So the next thing up here is to go through the intercooler stack. So we're going to start pulling things apart. We got uh, these nice air duct shielding stuff that's in the way, and that's always fun to deal with and can be kind of confusing to get back in place. We have an electric cooling fan. This is the AC condenser up here. The lower part of it, that's a transmission line down there, is the transmission cooler. So that's a two-in-one deal. That's kind of fun to deal with. This is the intercooler here. As you can see up in this upper, this is the passenger side, so upper right, the inlet. We're getting some uh, some oil coming out and coating things. So as you can see, it's dirty, but there's no oil buildup over on this side over here. So that's the intercooler. We'll get that out, clean that out, and put a little bit of JB Weld up in this corner to make sure it doesn't keep leaking. And further on back, this is the radiator. And uh, we'll have to start getting all this stuff out of the way. And then uh, we can get into that fan. And this also gives us a lot better access for getting into the timing belt and all these other things too. So I'll go ahead and start getting some of this stuff off. We're going to start with the cooling fan. There's a 10 millimeter there. There's another 10 millimeter hiding out down here in the dark. And then there's just one over on this other side over here. What we're going to see is that there's a little clip. It's kind of a slide-in deal right there. And so we just pull the cooling fan up, and then right in here it'll just slide out. So we need to get that. And then we also have the uh, wiring coming through to a plug right through here. So we'll need to undo that plug. It's got the red tab, slide the tab over, squeeze down on the squeeze mechanism, and then we'll pull the plug through these uh, rubber shrouds. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get that off. We're going to move on. AC condenser is held in with one 10 millimeter bolt up here. It just slides into the lower holding position down there. And then again, over here, we have a 10 millimeter hiding out right in here. And then down low, it just slides in there. So we're going to undo that. We're not going to unbolt the connections up here. We're going to leave it charged. And we're just going to kind of pull this forward a little bit. And uh, that'll give us some more room to work with. Once I've got the AC condenser out of the way, I'm going to go ahead and pull off these plastic things and toss them off to the side out of the way. Okay, so we got that uh, air ducting out of the way. So we're going to want to pull out the intercooler now. So we got a 10 millimeter bolt here a 10 millimeter bolt here and that's going to loosen up the uh, intercooler and radiator a bit then we're going to want to go ahead and take the uh, radiator off so we're going to undo a 10 millimeter bolt here and a 10 millimeter bolt here so that's what holds all that stuff together and then the radiator just pulls out now of course we're in this position where we have <laughs> the fan shroud in the way here so that makes things more difficult so I'm going to go ahead and undo a, uh, a driver's side uh, boost hose here get that out of the way and then further down in here there is a 10 millimeter holds on the fan shroud and then I'm going to come over here and get the uh, passenger side intercooler hose out of the way and then there's another 10 millimeter that holds on the fan shroud down there and then with all that done we're going to start to finagle stuff around until I can get out the fan shroud so I'm going to go ahead and get that going and then here in a little bit we'll be uh, we'll be draining the radiator as well and uh, we'll get some access into stuff all right, so you can see I've gotten a couple more things out of the way. I've uh, undone the uh, upper bolt for the intercooler and radiator here, as well as the one along the front. And now I'm going to work on draining some coolant out of the res out of the radiator, so I can pull off the uh, upper radiator hose. So I need want to get the upper radiator hose out of the way because there's a 10 millimeter bolt here that holds on the fan shroud and an analogous one over on the driver's side. So if we look on down there, you can see. 
set the light right about there. That is the uh, drain cock down on the bottom of the radiator. Now it's about a 17 millimeter in the head, but it's got some weird little lugs on it, so you can't just put a wrench on it to turn it, unfortunately. So it's best to go underneath the vehicle and reach up with a pair of pliers and just unscrew it a bit and then let it drain out. Up here on the top of the radiator, right here, this is the bleeder, so you'll want to uh, turn that uh, counterclockwise, unscrew it out, and open it up. And that'll let some air out, and we can start draining some uh, old coolant out. So I'll put a bucket underneath there to catch most of it. Then once that's done, I can take off that upper radiator hose and start getting this fan shroud out of the way. Okay, so you can see it draining down. I managed to catch most of it in the bucket. Although a little bit always wants to go someplace. That's the uh, drain cock up there. You can see there's a weird little lug on a couple of sides that keep you from just putting a wrench on it. I guess they didn't want you to put a wrench on to tighten it up too much, but it sure would make it easier just to undo it if they let me get a wrench on instead of some pliers. So I'll let that drain and splash and let a little bit go everywhere else so they got to clean up later. So get that, let that drain. Okay, so we've got the uh, inter the radiator still draining down there. We'll be going away for a while. And uh, up here, I'm going to go ahead and get the air box out of the way. Uh, on this Jeep, we're going to also be doing a thermostat, which is right here in this housing. It bolts to the uh, side of the head down there with three bolts. It's pretty difficult to get to. You have to pull off all these little ancillary uh, heater hoses there to get down to it. And you have to take the air box off to get in and get in with a 10 millimeter to get those off. So we're going to pull the air box out of the way. It just gives us more room to work with. Um, if I wasn't doing a thermostat housing, I would just leave this in and work around it. It's not really in the way for anything else. But we're also going to be doing a water pump, so the thermostat's going to come out of the way. The viscous heater, that's this guy right down here, it'll come out of the way to do the water pump. And uh, so I'll just be down this area anyway. I'm just going to pull the air box off. It'll make things a bit easier. So I'm going to go ahead and do that while this continues to drain. So to get this air box off, you're going to undo these two clips. That'll get you down to the air filter. That's how you get to it, to change it or clean it or whatever. I'll need to undo this uh, band clamp. Undo the mass airflow sensor plug. To do that, we'll lift up on the red, and then there's a squeeze, and it should pop right off. I'll do that later. And then, down here, you can see we have this little inlet duct. It just pulls right out. And there will be three rubber grommets down in here that, pull, that hold the airbox in, and we'll just pull up with a nice little tug, and it'll pop right out. Forgot to mention, there's, a, uh, there's another little sensor on the airbox here, um, and uh, it's, a little, it's got a little Mercedes symbol on it. And uh, it's just a simple little squeeze clip. Just squeeze it and it should pop right off. So, Okay, so as you see here, there are, th there are three plastic prongs on the bottom side of the air box, which then go down into three grommets right here. Here's one, here's the other, and then this other grommet pulled out, so I'll put it back in. When you put this back in, just uh, lube those up with a little bit of grease and uh, push them back down in. It's usually pretty hard to do, get them lined up just perfect, so don't be surprised if you have to fiddle with it for a little while. And uh, lube definitely makes it easier, so put a little bit of grease on there. So I've pulled the uh, AC condenser further forward, and then I've got the uh, intercooler here, just about loose. So I'm going to pull the intercooler out next. And uh, typically what I've done for this in the past, I've used this as a pivot corner. So you see it's tightest over here with the AC lines. You can only pull the, the uh, AC condenser so far forward. You can only push this so far back. So what I end up doing is uh, pulling it, leaving this kind of in place, picking up on the right side, rotating it up, and then pulling out uh, from over here. So that way I kind of get all this stuff up out of the way, and I just have this one little bit to kind of rotate out. So what I think I'm going to try to do is set the camera down someplace where you can see me do this, and maybe I'll do a little time lapse so you can see how long it takes me.
ahead and point out that this was a bit easier this time on the fan shroud because the lower section of the fan shroud here had been removed. There's actually a little piece that finishes off this little bit and it clips in here and here. It's real difficult to get off from underneath, but if you take this off once and then never put it back on, it makes it a lot easier to get off. So that was a nice little surprise in working on this Jeep that somebody had this off before and that was easy to get out. There, we have a radiator out. Now we got access down to get to the serpentine belt, time belt cover, <clears throat> the water pump, which is hiding out right underneath here, and the, uh, the thermostat. So, next up is to uh, get this fan off. So I'm going to go ahead and get that set up.